What's good, everybody? It's your girl, Bofina One, and I'm back with another podcast. Um, don't forget to share this podcast, thumbs it up, all that good stuff. Um, it's been a minute since I've posted on, on here, but, you know, I kind of wanted to get on and just talk about a few topics that, um, this is kind of been probably a little short, shorter podcast, but I just want to talk about some topics that, you know, have been going on in the media and just, just giving my opinion on all this stuff in general. So the first one, as everyone knows, you know, the whole world is basically shut down and that is the coronavirus um you know the coronavirus started the pandemic i guess you say recently started in terms of like us being shut down but it's it started spreading in the u.s i would say like early january like january february and it's just went crazy since basically um and just you know some of the effects that this virus has had you know uh the the virus like like the U.S. economy in general has been, was really good. You know, we were only like, I think it was like two or 3% of unemployment rate. So that still was a lot of people that were not, there were still a lot of people that were employed. It's not a lot of people that were unemployed. Um, now, you know, we've done a complete 360 as of, you know, recently we are, we have up to like 6 million people that are unemployed. And it seems like it's going up every single week. More and more people are getting furloughed or just completely laid off. Like, cause furlough means like you take a leave of absence and I guess in a sense, if everything goes well with the economy, you will be able to come back to your job where, on a, you know, when you get fired, you just get fired. Like you don't have a job. There is no job for you to even come back to. Um, and just some of the things that have been going on, you know, like the grocery store. Um, I live in Illinois. I don't know about other states. I can't really speak on them since I don't live in them. But at least for in Illinois, I know when all this stuff happened and, um, you know, the governor said like, Hey, we're getting ready to shut down and all that stuff. I know a lot of people went out and bought a lot of groceries. I mean, I did too. My parents did because it did kind of seem like they were going to shut down the grocery stores. So, you know, a lot of people wanted to buy a lot of stuff because they said, Oh, well, you know, we don't know if we're going to be able to, to get in the grocery store. So you better buy as much as you can get. And, you know, the grocery stores have been looking kind of like the adpocalypse, you know, just bear, not much stuff to get I mean they're better now I think because a lot of people once they found out that they were able to actually continue to shop and buy stuff I think a lot of people kind of calmed down with buying things as well as a lot of people are unemployed so you know a lot of people are like okay well I bought stuff um I need to save my money I don't know if I'm going to pay for my first month's rent etc 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 or their mortgage or you know whatever bills that they have because you know most people I would say live paycheck to paycheck a lot of people are not balling you know where they have all this extra with what people would call discretionary cash just waiting around uh so you know it's 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 a bad deal (laughs) you know it's bad because you know as more people lose their jobs right that means less money flows into the economy and as more people get sick that means that we have less workers especially what we would call you know essential workers um being able to do what they need to do you know for example like in factories like like for example toilet paper has been a big thing and paper towel a lot of people are like hoarding this stuff for some apparent reason um and a lot of those people are starting to get sick the essential workers bus drivers uh police officers you know people are starting to get sick um and it's it's crazy because you know some people show really hard symptoms like some people are asymptomatic meaning that they don't show any symptoms they uh go along either for a long period of time without showing symptoms or they never show symptoms and their body fights it off which is good but then it's also bad because those are people that also are considered like germ givers they are they because they don't show symptoms they don't know if they test positive or or not so that means that they're giving it to other people without necessarily knowing um and you know stuff like price price gouging you know on specific items like hand sanitizer lysol you know people are like stores prices are starting to go for that and as well as what's really sick is a lot of people like on ebay or amazon whatever like people that sell things are raising the prices so like for example a pack of toilet paper people trying to sell it for 50 to 100 dollars. you know what i mean like people are literally abusing the fact that hey i have this stuff so i'm gonna spend i'm gonna charge a whole bunch of money and you're gonna have some people out there that are gonna pay for it because they really just don't have it you know like they they don't have it so they're like hey i, I need toilet paper i need this you know because some people maybe live by themselves where you know maybe they only buy a six pack or an eight pack or a four pack you know because they don't necessarily use a life it's just one person in an apartment and so when all this stuff happened, when people ran out to the store and started buying all this stuff, it's like, it, it's it's kind of scary. Um, and then also, too, I just think people hoarded, you know, like crazy, buying so much stuff. It's like, you know, think about somebody else, not just your 
uh, family. Um, so I think that's another thing, you know, is the price prices on stuff is going up just like crazy, and, and it's really... And I would say that it's like really putting a big strain on, you know, people in general, even the people that are working, you know, because typically you make your budget for you know your, your your groceries or whatever your 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 stuff is is going to roughly cost x amount of dollars so now that people are having to spend more money you know it, it's it's also putting a strain still on the people that are working however on the bright side is yes people are saving a lot of money because you know like for example right me I typically would go out on the weekends, you know, hang with my friends, all that stuff. Well, I'm not able to do that. So I'm saving money by not being able to go out. Um, at the same time, I'm also uh, saving money because, like, gas prices have went down like crazy. You know, it doesn't cost me hardly any money now to put gas in my car. Um, just a lot of things have went down. Um, but at the same time, other things have also become harder to get or they've become more expensive to buy. Uh, another thing, you know, pe- that has become a big thing is people are, you know, washing their hands, more and I, and I also think people are, are just taking better care of themselves like I think people are being more self-conscious of stuff stuff that I think as Americans and just people in general we we I mean people are just nasty you know people didn't really take washing their hands as frequently as they should or you know touching stuff people I think are now are, are doing that stuff that maybe we should have been doing like a lot of stores are now closing earlier so they can sanitize certain things like that's stuff that I feel like that should have been done you know, years ago, this is stuff that we should have been practicing, but we didn't, you know, um, and I think a lot of this stuff would have helped stop the spread of this virus, um, and, you know, uh, it's helping the ozone, you know, many people are not driving, so we're not polluting the world with, you know, all our cars and the fumes that they, that they, that they blow off, uh, but it's it's like a ghost town, you know. It's crazy going to work. Like there's literally no traffic out there. Like it, it's it's crazy. But the thing that I fear is that if these stimulus checks don't come out soon and people don't start going back to work soon, you know, people are gonna start robbing. You know, people are gonna start stealing because it's like, how are you gonna get this money? Where you know, what are you gonna do? Like unemployment, yeah, it's it's supposing now. I think it's like you're gonna get six hundred dollars every week or something like that. So it's supposed to be now like the highest that it's ever potentially been but still you know like some people got more bills than so what six hundred dollars a week that's what six hundred a thousand two hundred thousand eight hundred two thousand four hundred dollars a month I mean that's pretty good but some people got bills that are bigger than that you know some people have bigger incomes you know so I don't know how all that's gonna work out with people mortgages and their rent and you know uh et cetera et cetera et cetera but it's it's um it's crazy. You know, there's some positives of it. Like I said, the money saving, I think people are also spending more time with their family. People, I don't know a lot of people have said this has given them time to kind of self-reflect and just kind of think about like, kind of just think about themselves and, you know, their life as of right now and maybe what they can do to improve because, you know, you do have more time. So you have the time to try to, I guess you could say, self-reflect and self-improve, you know? Um, so, but, you know, it's, it's just crazy the, the, you know, just how a virus can come in and literally just take out people and, uh, and not only infect people, but infect the economy, infect the world. I mean, it just changed our day-to-day routine. You know what I'm saying? Like, like even in grocery stores, I don't know, I, I would imagine it's probably in other states too, but at least here, like, you go into groceries or they have little like X's or like marks where it shows like, okay, six feet of distance between you and this other person, you know, it's just, it's so crazy. Like, you know, nurses are now getting sick. Doctors are getting sick, you know, and it's like, okay, well, if they get sick, then who's going to save us? Who's going to protect us? Like, and in some ways, you know, they, they always, people always talk about like in China, you know, they're, they're so demanding and, you know, it's like whatever they say goes. But if you look at what's going on up in China right now, you know, they have actually slowed down the spread because they're making people stay at home. Nobody's going out. Nothing is functioning. So, I mean, I know in America, because, you know, we're this free country, free world, this and that, I feel like it'd be a lot harder to do that. But I'm saying that in some ways, I almost feel like we need to do that because in order for us to to stop it from spreading, you have to stop people from moving because people are constantly still going out, still going to the store, still going to work. Because put it like this, right? Although, yes, they say, oh, only the essential workers. Well, put it like this. You know how you have a pyramid scheme, right? Okay. 
So at the top, you know, the people that make a lot of money, it's less of them. Then you got the middle class and you have that they call, you know, the lower end. There's more people at the bottom than at the top. So more of the essential workers, the workers that people talk about that only make minimum wage, the workers that people say, oh, you know, they, they look down on them. It's more of them in this world. So you have more people that are bus drivers. You have more people that are uh, people that work at McDonald's. You have more people that work at Jules, Target, Walmart. You have more of those uh, employees than you have of people that are like CEOs or you know what I mean like some account executives so if you think about it there's still a lot of people that are working now don't get me wrong six million people that's a lot of people out of a job don't get me wrong that's a crap ton of people right but if you think about how many people are actually working in the world I believe it's like what 115 million or I don't know some like I remember I looked it up actually let's just let's just look it up for you know giggles right now right now just to see I remember it was over a hundred something million you know how many people are employed in the U.S. let's just let's just let's just see okay so as of 2018 there are 155.76 million people that are employed this was in 2018 so it probably honestly went up that was two years ago off of like a census right so if you think about that six million people okay so that's roughly you got a hundred and what forty 9.7648, you know, because it probably done went up since, you know, so that's still a lot of people that are working, a lot of people that are still working, Um, and that's part of the reason why it's still spreading so much, because you still have, they've cut down the movement by stopping schools, you know, stuff that's considered non-essential, but they, but it's still a lot of essential workers that are going to work, that are, that are doing, you know what I'm saying, so... Um, the virus is going to continue to spread, and I think as more and more of these tests come out, I think it's going, the, 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 the numbers are going to get higher because you're going to find more people have it. Like I said, a lot of people are asymptomatic. Heck, I could have it and not even know, you know, because a lot of people have it, but they just don't show any signs or symptoms of it. So, you know, this is, I don't know. Like I said, this is something we ain't never seen before, and it's just... It's just crazy, you know, it's just, it's just, it's crazy and um, it's scary at the same time because, you know, me, everyone in my household is still working, but it's like, you just don't know, you know, it, it's, you know, you hope you have a job, but it, it's kind of scary. I mean, it's not much you can do in terms of stressing about it, but I'm just saying, like, it's scary at the same time because a lot of jobs that maybe were uh, on, on, what you call it? that were stable are no longer stable. You know, they're not stable no more. People are getting fired. People are losing their jobs left and right. Like, like it's butter. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's like, it's nothing. It's crazy. So, um, you know, we kind of just, I guess you kind of have to wait and see. Hopefully, you know, this, this goes by. I know they did say that, you know, I mean, in general, like when it, when it's warmer out germs, it's harder for them to fester, like to move because the heat kind of kills them. So, you know, up here, it's still kind of cold. Like, it's, it's in the middle. Like, it's between cold and hot, hot and cold. So I do believe that if, if we can get to closer to the summer where it starts getting warm out, I do believe that um, um, it, can, it, it will slow it down. But the other thing is that if we don't get a vaccine out quick enough, this will be, if you think, it kind of will be like a seasonal issue. Like, it'll, it'll stop and then it'll come back. You know, kind of like the flu. The flu is really bad in the wintertime because it's cold, but then towards the spring and summer, it goes away. So it, it, it's it's going to be like one of those things, I feel like it. But we'll see. You know what I'm saying? We will see. Um, I kind of want to give a chance to do a few Q&As. Um, that's kind of what I want to do now with these podcasts is you know, kind of talk about a topic, kind of ramble on about it, and then after, you know, do a little bit of a QA. and a um, Like I said, I want to try to get, I don't think it's going to maybe quite get to 30 minutes, but I want to try to do like a 30 minute to an hour long podcast, you know, put a couple of these out maybe a week. Um, I don't know how often I've been to do, but I'd like to at least get one or two out a week if I can, if not more to give you guys content and topics. But um, so the first one, well, it's the only one is I, I posted this uh, not like two hours ago. So um, from Black, he said he he actually asked asked a couple questions. The first one is how to find yourself on YouTube. Um, so this is a question that a lot of people talk about, especially like new YouTubers, people that are new. You know, how to find kind of like your style, you know, your niche. Um, uh, how to find yourself on YouTube because you know I've been on YouTube for a while. I've been posting content for a while, and I've I've went through um, trends or 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 what they call it. Uh, you go through phases where, you know, you, you want to do this, but then you're like, no, I don't want to do that. I want to do this, you know? And so with, with, 
the, the crazy part about stuff like YouTube and Twitch and all these sites is you kind of have to have a niche, I would say, for the most part, because as sad as it sounds, people don't like you to be diverse. People like you to be in a box. They like to know. People like things that are predictable. You know what I'm saying? Like, think of it this way, right? Like the news, right? You Whether you watch the news channel, whether you look it up on your phone, you like to know what's going to happen. People don't like things to be unexpected. So that's why channels that are variety or channels that, you know, they post different things, uh, maybe every day or every week, it's harder for them to grow because the audience doesn't know what they're going to put out. Where let's say you have a person that posts, you know, gaming videos, you have a person that posts blogs, you have a person that posts shoes, you know, like you know what they're going to post. So you know, okay, I want to watch, I'm going to watch this channel specifically because this is what they post where other channels that are variety it's harder for them to grow like my channel I've done a lot of variety stuff and that's probably one of the reasons why I've kind of has become stagnant and it's been harder for me to grow because I'm I've done so much variety stuff that people can't put me in a box and see people like to put you in a box people like to know people like for things to be predictable and that's part of the reason, like I said, like why the whole coronavirus thing is so out of hand because there's no, like we don't know when we're going to come out of quarantine. We don't know. People are really, we're, everything's unpredictable right now. You know what I'm saying? So um, I think that answers the question about how to, you know, in terms of how to find yourself on YouTube. I think in order to answer that question, I think you really just, you kind of have to do variety stuff. I think you, you know, unless you know off rip that like hey okay this is what I want to do maybe I want to be a reaction channel or maybe I want to be a vlog like unless you know like this is 100% what I want to do I think testing the waters is the best way to figure out how do you find yourself on YouTube you know because you could make 50 videos of maybe a certain niche and then after that 50th video you may realize like I don't want to do this this is not like this is not what I want to do uh, which is another reason why a lot of people make multiple channels so they do have the option to try different um to try different types of content you know like some people have a reaction channel some people have an anime channel some people have a gaming channel they have multiple channels so they're able to prosper on those different channels because regardless people only want to see one type of thing on that channel people don't want to see 50 different things they don't know you know what i mean like i said people like for stuff to be predictable that's what it is sad to say um, so I think that's that would be my answer to how to find yourself on YouTube if you feel like you don't know is to just start posting and posting maybe different things Cause especially like when you're not a big YouTuber you know you can post whatever you want and no one you know what I'm saying like like you're not known yet so you can do what you want and kind of test the waters and see what you like I feel like it's when you become a big YouTuber and when you start to prosper and really get big I think that's when it becomes hard for people to actually try and um uh get out of that out of a bubble because you get known for something and once you get known for something people don't they don't want to pull you away from what they know uh, so as a smaller creator, someone starting out, I would say just post, 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 and, you know, test the waters, maybe like me make an Instagram page, you know, just see what's out there, um, you know, comment back on, on your, in your comment section, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, and then the last question he asks is, and where is the line between copying and taking inspiration from others? Um, honestly, I think everything on YouTube, and it's, and it says if you think about it, someone has already done it. You know, uh, in terms of copying, I think copying is like when you deliberately take someone's idea and you don't even try to spin it off as yours. You just do the exact same thing. I think that's copying. But copying could be like, okay, maybe I see someone did a shoe collection video, and maybe now I want to do my shoe collection video. Um, I want to do a shoe, you know, so like maybe I want to do a shoe collection video, but I'm going to do it like maybe they did a shoe collection video. Maybe I'm going to do a boot collection video or maybe I'm going to do a gaming collection. You know what I'm saying? Like that's inspiration. You say, oh, I thought that was really cool, but I'm going to use that idea, but I'm going to twist it my way. So I think that's the difference between inspiration and copying. Copying is just like, okay, you literally saw the person do the exact same thing, exact same cuts, edits, etc., and you just... You know what I mean? You didn't even try to make it your own. Because as far as I'm concerned, everyone does the same thing on YouTube. Like, people that do reactions, they all react to the same video. They just react in a way where people feel like their opinion is valid. People feel like their um, discussion on that topic or whatever it is is valid because it's different. You know what I'm saying? It's like that. But if you really think about, like, like even the news channels, all these news channels are talking about the corona 
all these news channels are talking about unemployment. Like everybody's talking about the same thing, but each each news channel has different um, like anchors, different newscasts. So they all bring something different to the table. That's what makes them different, if that makes sense. Um, so I think that's like the line between copying and then taking inspiration. Um, so yeah, guys, this will be like kind of like my first podcast in a while. Um, like I said, the goal is to try to, you know, put out maybe two or three of these or four, you know, we'll see, you know, I don't want to overdo it because, you know, podcasts are longer, so they take longer to make. So like, for example, a podcast for most people would say it's probably at least 30 minutes to an hour, right? So you think about a typical YouTube video is probably maybe 10 to 15 minutes when you can make in that hour of recording, I could have made four videos, you know what I'm saying? So, um, and it takes longer to render, you know what I mean? And I don't, I don't want to over push myself or over promise something so like i said if i can try to put out let's just say one or two podcasts a week we'll see how they go and also like i said promotion i need to promote so if you guys enjoy these podcasts please share them with your friends family you know post them whatever the case is you know um just you know to get it out there uh so yeah guys if you enjoyed this podcast please share it um and you know just keep listening to them come back you know, subscribe to the channel so you can, you know, get notifications of when I go live or or when I upload on here. So yeah, hope you guys have a good rest of your day and I'll check you guys in the next one. Peace.